Так и так, ребята, всем привет. Я здесь опутан проводами, микрофон готовил. Я по вашим просьбам в Инстаграме а, решил сделать для вас видео, но не о даче в Австралии, о а, Каминиал Гарден. Вы можете увидеть у меня позади за спиной. Вот. Я сейчас буду общаться с президентом и с директором этого садика. Вот. И она нам все расскажет, как здесь можно что выращивать, что цветет, что не цветет. И можно, как можно здесь, наверное, арендовать грядку, чтобы выращивать там свои травы и плоды. Так что вот. Надеюсь, что вам понравится. Не забывайте подписываться на канал, ставьте лайк, ставить лайк и оставлять комментарии. Это очень важно для того, чтобы тешить алгоритмы YouTube, как вы знаете. Все, поехали смотреть. Um, I'm going to show you that Australians have to, a lot of Australians like to make things themselves and grow things themselves um, and it comes back from generations of there was nothing here yeah, yeah. so it was either we had to learn to adapt and use the food and grow the food ourselves and now of course it's very in uh, this generation to be organic but to our, our grandmothers and grandfathers everybody had gardens, everybody had chooks. Um, everything but was organic, actually. Everything was organic, and they, they find that word really funny because they go, w what's organic? You mean you just grow things? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but back then, um, yeah, so this was, so it's coming around again, the young people are now coming and realizing that mm -hmm. having uh, tomato freshly picked off the vine is, is really nice, yeah. um, as compared, compared to the supermarkets that don't taste anything like a tomato, but, um, Lots of things growing, but it's different. Every, every place in Australia is a little bit different. And here we've got subtropical heat. So it's, we don't have four seasons. We have like two seasons, really. We just have um, a hot and wet season and then a, a dry and not so hot season. <laughs> um, Gold has, has got like a very mild climate yes. in contrast to Perth, for example. Oh, that's right. Or I'm from Tasmania, so oh. they have the four seasons. Mm. So each part of Australia that you visit would be completely different um, to the, what the Gold Coast. But Gold Coast is hot and you'll see sweat, humid. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but I, I'll take you around if you want. Um, All right. So we've got different sections in this garden. We're, at the moment, we, we are just going to do a, what they call a fernery, which is a lot of native ferns. We, we're in the process of doing that um, because we've got this beautiful big tree here and it's a fig tree and it's lovely. The birds love it. We love it, except for two things. It has massive big roots. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can and as much as we enjoy sitting in, under it in the shade, a lot of things don't grow there because it's shaded. Yeah. So we've decided to try and um, make it into a, a feature and have an area to grow. But there are some things like our native ferns um, mm -hmm. that love it underneath. The other day we went to, uh, somebody was logging down a tree, cutting down a tree and we just went up to them and asked, can we have some of your slices of the tree? Because otherwise it just goes to the to either be chipped or to just yeah, yeah. the dumped. So he was more than happy because we've, 
We found some nice logs like this one where it's got a natural hole in it. Mm -hmm. You can see, so that's just perfect for us. We'll be planting up like this is a bird's nest fern. We're going to actually place it over here. All oh, this is a bit, bit of a mess at the moment because it's it's process in the planning. Um, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this whole area a fernery. Mm -hmm. We'll come yeah, over to the blueberry bed. I'll oh, show yes, you. Actually, are my ah, yes. I mean, Russia is the you grow blueberries in yeah, Russia. Yeah. And um, cranberries too. Ah, see, in Australia, berries. It's a lot harder. It's hotter and they don't like it, but they actually like it under the fig tree. <laughs> yes. So we, we're actually, we've only just planted that, but we have to have special soil because our soil here is not acidic enough. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to go to a park and grab all their pine, <laughs> pine needles and pine cones. And you'll see that we have planted wood chips look at the richness of that soil yeah, yeah. this bed is normally a salad or a communal bed there's nothing in it at the moment as i said better to come back later and get another update because normally we plant this out inside you put your veggie scraps and then some leaf litter or something brown and you like a lasagna you keep layering it and then um then at the end of the day, I can just lift that up, spread it out. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So it actually have, doesn't have a bottom. No. So it's a lazy, especially as you get older too, you know, lifting or carting or something, if you can make it easier. Mm -hmm. If you've got, I've done it at home with just a normal garbage bin. I've just cut the top out mm -hmm. and used the lid to put it on top. And you've got a very inexpensive um, garbage bin. And then something Aussies are quite good at is they're quite good at using bits and pieces to make garden beds. These are actually bathtubs. <laughs> so, yes, just don't throw them out because they make, they've already, already got the drainage hole in them. Mm -hmm. um, you can, this is, we will tease it up later so you can't see it's a bathtub. Well, we've got, well, now we've got our individual plots and we've got everybody here gets to choose whatever they like to put into their plots. So some people love flowers and some people love um, veggies and some people love herbs mm -hmm. and some people will grow a vining flower. Um, but it's, it's good because you get to choose. If you like tomatoes, you can plant the whole lot with tomatoes if that's what you like. And then you get different styles of planting. You get your permaculture people who will just go, let everything will grow around. And then you get um, the people, like sometimes I do a, like a, they call it a square foot gardening mm -hmm. in my- um, it's Like a flower bed or something. Yeah, it's, it's like a grid system. Mm -hmm. um, in my winter and spring, winter autumn spring is my square foot gardening where I'm planting it's high density and I'm planting things in a, a square foot um, grid but in summer when it's hot and it's humid I'll show you later um, I plant vining plants <laughs> because that's they love vining plants a lot of vining plants like sweet potatoes um, and I think I've got a choco vine growing yeah. so I remember my grandmother we used to grow spinola, but they are round and white. Ah! Uh, in Russia it's called uh, patisson. Yes, That's what we do know. tend to plant flowers in amongst it all because we realise the um, importance of bees in pollination. So we know if we've got lots of plants here, and I'll show you, we've got our own little native bees here. Oh, really? And they're very different. Um, I'll show you where. What happens is you can come here, um, if there is a space available mm -hmm. and then you get accepted by the committee, you just come in and it's just, it's very inexpensive to join for the year. I think it's 20 or $25 yeah. for the whole year. And when you think a, a, a bunch of kale, organic kale is, is $7 yeah. each, uh, it doesn't take you long to recoup that money back, mm -hmm. but just a bit of elbow grease. 
Over here is our little native bees. And you'll almost think that they're flies. They're so tiny. Oh, really? See? I haven't seen that small bee. And these are stingless. Ah, oh, actually about them, actually. So we don't have to worry about anybody getting stung. And they, they're just perfect because a lot of our natives have really tiny um, places that they need, to, they can get into. But the European bees tend to drive them out. So sometimes they'll go through really hard, like at the moment it's been really hard on the um, bees because we've had floods and we've had fires. So in the last few years we had fires decimate all the, the bushland. Yeah, I feel like it's three years ago or so. Yeah, and then they just got over that and then they've had floods. So it is a, a extreme weather, so bees are very, very important. saying earlier like in summertime I just go let the vines rain <laughs> and you'll find this is a choco vine. Is this sweet or sour? Choco vine has a texture of a pear and um, it, it has a got bland taste so used a lot in Asian stir fry. so if you throw some apples with that you would be hard pressed to know what is an apple and what is a choco mm -hmm. so when in the days of uh, when things were tough financially, um, that's what they would do. They would throw that in. Uh, this is a long bean. Our normal beans are growing in winter, but this long bean loves it growing up in the, mm -hmm. the summer heat. Here's our trusty old bathtub again. Um, and this is a, the worm farm. And what, what they do is quite simply, we start to feed, put our scraps here. Mm -hmm. So all the worms, of course, travel over to that side um, of the bathtub to eat, eat. That means that this side over here, oh, two people, they've done two sides. They shouldn't do two sides. That means worms everywhere. But these are different worms to, there's different types of worms in your garden. These are uh, special compost worms and they're very often under leaf litter and things like that. And they just kind of like the top surface uh, food. Is Whereas... Like a normal earthworm, worms or the... Yeah, they're smaller. They, they are smaller. I'm just trying... Oh, get you. I don't know if you can see. See how tiny they are? Uh, yeah. They're smaller than your normal worm. Mm -hmm. They're smaller than your big earthworms. But they do an amazing job because they break that top surface light stuff down. This down here is the moisture that comes out from the worm farm. They call it worm tea and it has, it looks like tea, um, but it's so concentrated with nutrients. So all the gardeners get to put that on their pots. Here we go, man. Oh, Can I hold some of my flowers over there? Yeah. That would be oh, interesting. She wants oh. You just come with me. That's right, hang on. I'm connected. A bit of colour. A bit of colour. Yeah. Well, we're talking about our community garden here, and while a lot of people grow vegetables and herbs and, and all kinds of, of vegetables, I like to grow flowers because the bright colours encourage the bees and of course we need the bees to pollinate all the other vegetables so that's why I love to grow all, all my flowers. And the other nice thing about um, growing it here is that you haven't got your sprays, your insecticides, like a lot of commercial flower um, people have to put a lot of pesticides onto their mm -hmm. flowers because they want perfect looking flowers and nature will give you lots of perfect looking flowers but also some not so look you know great looking flowers so they'll just spray 
they'll heavily spray. So it's nice to come here, be able to put your nose into that <coughs> and not worry that you're getting a, a whiff. But commercially of grown flowers for the floristry market is totally different to our garden flowers. And this is what I like about being able to grow simple garden flowers that have the lovely perfume without that smell of chemicals. Yeah. Mm, mm. Um, I too save all my garden scraps. We just live in an apartment and my banana skins and eggshells crushed together are what produce my lovely roses. And it's a real challenge growing roses in a subtropical climate, but these just never stop flowering, hence they're the small ones. And what are they? They're miniature roses and they're called, and, and it's called Vic, Victoria's Pride. Victoria's Pride? Yes, and these other ones are just little dahlias with some parsley I've just picked out of my plot. Because I use a lot of parsley too. I was going to say, you can, um, and, and that's, that's the good thing about Lynn, what she will do is she will mix herbs with her, mm. her floral arrangements mm. and they actually look quite good. Never thought of doing that. But the other thing is, can't you eat dahlia tubers if um, you're hungry? You can actually, I, yeah. I, I don't know about those. Yeah, I you can eat the tuber. Called sociable garlic. Yes, and that one is wonderful in potato salads. Mm. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I um, started growing it in my garden. But it also does it look pretty, but if you smell it, it, sm it tastes like garlic. Yeah, you just have a pinch a little one. Oh. Yeah, it smells like garlic, absolutely. Mm. And this one here, the begonia, mm -hmm. It's great on little cupcakes and it has a very strong lemon flavour. Yeah, I've seen cupcakes with this flower. Uh, yeah. flower. Of course, I didn't know what sort of. And little pansies. We love the little tiny violas. They're beautiful. Yeah. And don't this. There's lots of flowers. As I said, come back in a few months time yes. because this, this will be an all an edible flower bed. So any flower that you pick here will be something so that you can. So it should be like in the middle of winter or? Uh, probably spring. Yes. Spring. You're not uh, seeing the garden at its best at the moment uh, because look, today it's 28 degrees as we're talking to you early in the morning. So quite hot. <laughs> that's right. So hence the hat. Uh, and you, you should come back spring fair. Oh is yes. 30th. Uh, which is uh, okay. I'm still thinking spring is when it's like in September. September. Yeah. You here? September. Yeah, we are living here. Oh, okay. Well, make sure. Perfect. The Katarina tells you to come back mm -hmm. um, at spring fair. Because then you'll get an idea of what a little country feel yeah, yeah, yeah. thing is, and, and with homemade jars and jam. Oh, we've got a beautiful, beautiful mulberry tree over there. Yeah. We have to get up there early in the morning before the locals discover it before us. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, beautiful, beautiful once a jam. year, they, it, it kind of looks like a blackberry, but it's called a mulberry, and it's a very short season, um, and it normally comes in. Uh, Around uh, like September, a, the of, uh, yeah. yes. yes, and it's quite sweet, and mm. we make it into mulberry jam and have, serve it with a Devonshire tea mm. normally. Um, mm. But the fruit bats love it too. Yeah, <laughs> so we have lots of competitors. Yeah, <laughs> those mulberries, yeah. but luckily it produces a lot, mm. but just for a short time. So it's a bit of and mad. even over against our wall, where we have the passion fruit, I've been here gardening. There's no passion fruit out ripe, but I've seen cockatoos, the white birds with the yellow under the wings, cockatoos, pecking them all and then ripping them to bits. It's <laughs> yeah. welcome to Australia. <laughs> yeah, the birds the here cockatoos. Are, sometimes that would be a bit of a cultural shock because sometimes our birds are virtually naughty. You know, they're, they're like a cockatoo can be quite destructive. It, it won't just pick to eat, it will pick because it's kind of fun to toss, it, ah, yeah, toss yeah, something out. Playful. Yes, and then we've got big, you know, ibises that'll get into your bins and pick oh, out all your... Them yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right, yes. So we've got some cheeky birds here. Um, mm -hmm. And then we've got always our magpies, haven't we? That, that what about the black ravens that sit up there? Or the, well, they're not there today, but yeah. they're pretty vicious. So, anyway. So we've got our, um, yeah, we've got our magpies that'll come and you'll be digging and they'll be right near you mm -hmm. waiting for that worm but you'll see bir um, bird bath we encourage everything we encourage the birds we can't encourage the insects um, actually I just picked a great big orb spider that's another thing we probably russians don't have australia has a lot of insects yeah. <laughs> but we we cater for it too we love our bees we love our birds mm. um, 
We it's just... our little touch of paradise here, coming away from the busiest of all the high rises and all the crazy things that happen out there in mm. suburbia. And this is our little touch of paradise. Yes. I yeah. love it. I like your excitement. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> OK. Uh, is that all right? OK, thank you very much for your time and efforts. I would have been better prepared if I but that's all right. That's no. how we go. Yeah, no worries. Thanks so much. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, probably in springtime. OK, see you. Yeah, 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 thanks so much for your time too. Oh, that's okay. All yeah, right. sorry for inconvenience. Oh, no, it's fine. Enjoy yourself. All right, bye bye. How do you find it, Karina? My love is in the Yeah, sorry. <laughs>